Hello students, I welcome you to EPG Patshala. My name is Dr. Shiv Kumar Sood. I am senior scientist in the division of animal biochemistry at National Dairy Research Institute that is NDRI Karnal in Haryana, India. Today I am going to talk about protein ligand docking from the paper biostatistics and bioinformatics. Dear students, proteins are involved in various biochemical functions such as enzyme catalysis, immune protection, coordinated motion as well as many others. Each of the function is achieved through interactions with other biomolecules including small molecules known as ligands. If a protein is involved in a disease state, then this protein may provide a potential target for developing a ligand as drug so as to alleviate the disease condition. The function of each protein target is determined by their three dimension structure. Therefore, the first step for structure based drug design is to obtain a three dimensional structure of the target protein. If the experimental three dimensional structure of the target protein is not available, then one can opt for homology modeling to obtain an adequate model for use in drug development. After obtaining the structure, either experimental or a model, the drug development then continues with the identification of a lead molecule, which can regulate the biochemical activity of the target protein. And we want to regulate the biochemical activity of the target protein in a desired way. This identification of the lead molecule is achieved through high throughput virtual screening of 3D structures of all the small ligand molecules or what we call drugs library, which may contain millions of the drugs. And this helps in virtual, this high throughput involving millions of uh, drugs, uh, high throughput virtual screening uh, helps in identification of a lead molecule, which can then be optimized for developing a drug. Alternatively, one can use substrate of an enzyme. For example, uh, the target protein is an enzyme. So if uh, we know and we know the substrate of that uh, which bind into the binding pocket of the active site of the enzyme. Therefore, we can start with the substrate to change the structure of the substrate to convert the substrate into an inhibitor molecule. So that in case we are in, uh, we are interested in inhibiting the activity, we can develop a competitive inhibitor. Alternatively, allosteric sites may be targeted. So in this way, all this is done after taking the in silico protein ligand docking. The high throughput virtual screening will take each molecule in the drugs library have, having three dimensional structure and try to fit onto the protein to bind it on various sites on the protein and then ramp each molecule for its binding affinity. Those which will be binding at the correct target site with high affinity will provide us with a lead molecule. So therefore ranking after ranking we can then go for docking of this molecule onto the target structure so that we get a number of dockings and then select from that dockings uh, which are the best one, which is the best one. The best one uh, docking then uh, follows in silico lead optimization. I mean once we have analyzed the dockings and we know that okay now this is the target protein uh, in which a molecule is going to bind and may give us the activity in the desired way. Therefore, we'll try to optimize, optimize this molecule so that to, so as to increase its binding efficiency or binding affinity so that we can regulate the 
activity biochemical function of the target protein in the desired way. This may be uh, acting as an inhibitor so that the protein is not able to work or an activator so that the activity of protein is enhanced. So lead optimization then finally gives us what we call a drug molecule. Thank you. Therefore, docking of a known ligand such as substrate with its binding protein such as an enzyme begins with obtaining three dimensional structure of the target protein and its ligand. This is followed by reformatting 3D structure coordinates for submission to a docking software for producing protein ligand dockings. Finally, we need to analyze resulting dockings to select a biochemically relevant docking to understand the interactions of amino acid residues in the enzyme and the chemical groups on the substrate so as to design alternative molecules having desired interactions for controlling the biochemical activity of the target protein. In the last module, we have seen an enzyme HPRKP which is a bifunctional enzyme and as kinase it adds phosphate from the ATP to the serine 46 of the second substrate that is HPR. As phosphorylase, it removes the same transferred phosphate to serine 46. From serine 46, this phosphate is removed by the phosphorylase. As kinase, HPR accepts ATP and HPR. HPR KP accepts ATP, the first substrate, and HPR, the second substrate. Bind both of these substrates to its active site and after the reaction, the transfer of the phosphate from the gamma ATP to the serine 46, ADP leaves the active site and phosphorylated, serine phosphorylated HPR also leaves the active site of the enzyme. In this module, we are interested in visualizing the binding of the two substrate that is ATP and HPR in the active site of the enzyme so that we are able to see which are the residues which are present near these two substrates and therefore might be involved in the catalysis. In achieving this target, we need the three-dimensional structures of the HPRKP enzyme, three-dimensional coordinates of the substrates that is ATP and three-dimensional coordinates of the HPR protein. To obtain 3D coordinates of HPRKP, and HPR, visit PDB at RCSB and start typing HPR kinase in the search text box. The text box will suggest some recommended names such as uniprot molecule name or ontology terms to guide you selecting from the suggested names. The first suggestion for uniprot molecule name that is HPR kinase phosphorylase matches our requirement. Therefore, simply click on the first suggestion or enter complete name HPR kinase phosphorylase and click go button. The organism column in search results shows available structures. Scroll down the list to inspect each of the six entries. These are listed next for ready reference. The third structure, one KKL in the list, reveals the X-ray structure of HPRKP in complex with its protein substrate HPR. Therefore, this will allow visualization of the substrate HPR in the binding pocket of the enzyme. However, this structure has only C-terminal residues from 135 to 310 of HPRKP. This list, in addition, does not include any structure of HPRKP which is bound to ATP. The fifth structure 1Q7 is the structure of the full length HPRKP from Staphylococcus. 1Q7 also has two phosphates bound in its binding pocket. Therefore, full length HPRKP may be used for docking ATP and the bound phosphates may help in selecting the correctly oriented ATP docking in the p-loop. This docking will allow visualization of the substrate ATP 
in the binding pocket of the enzyme. After achieving docking, we'll have two structures. One HPRKP, full length HPRKP bound to ATP and second part length HPRKP bound to the second substrate that is HPR. At this stage, both of the HPRKP structures can be superimposed onto each other so as to bring both the ATP and the HPR bound to two separate enzyme structures into one structure. This will help in uh, understanding the interaction of the ATP and the HPR within the binding po pocket of the enzyme HPRKP. Therefore, download 1 KKL and 1 KO7 structure files from the PDB. Open 1 KO7 structure using Swiss PDB viewer and uh, scroll down the control panel, you will find that uh, it shows two chains, chain A and chain B. We need only one chain to be used in docking of the ATP. Therefore, we need to extract the coordinates of chain A that is monomer of the HPRKP. To extract the monomer, first select the first residue that is methionine 1 in chain A from the control panel by clicking on its label MET1. Now scroll down to asparagine 298, press shift key and click on ASN 298 label. This will select the residues from MET1 to ASN 298 that is the complete chain A residues. The selection is successful as the color of the residues labels in the first column changes to red. Now save the selected residues using command selected residues of current layer of the save option in the file menu. Save the file with the name 1K07 monomer. This structure will be used to produce talking of ATP to HPRKP and then it will be used to screen docking results for selecting correctly docked ATP in the p-loop. Now scroll down to the end of control panel, uh, control key pressed and uh, clicked successively on PO4316 and PO4317 of chain A. Select these two residues and save the selected residues using command selected residues of current layer of save option in file menu. Save the file name 1K07 monomer with phosphates as the file name. Use the command of the save option in file menu that is selected residues of current layer. This structure will be used to screen docking results for selecting only those dockings which have phosphates overlapping with the phosphates of the ATP in the P loop. Therefore, save the complete chain A and two phosphates selected and name this file as 1K7 monomers with phosphate file name using command selected residues of the current layer of the save option in the file menu. In the control panel, make visible two phosphates that is PO4316 and PO4317 as well as residues from glycine 151 to serine 158 that is residues of the P loop. Also make visible the labels of the residue 151 and residue 158 with complete chain displayed as ribbons from the fifth column. Display stereo view. Now zoom in to reveal the binding of two phosphates in the P loop of HPRKP as shown in the current slide. Now start Swiss PDB viewer afresh and open the file KKL structure. Scroll down the control panel, you will find that uh, there are six chains. These are labeled as chain A, B, C and H, I, J. Press shift key in the first, press shift key and click in the first column. It will 
hide all the main chain atoms. Now press shift key again and click in the second column. This will hide the side chains also. Therefore, now we want to view the chain A, B and C as ribbons and chain H, I and J in cyan color for the main chain and the side chain atoms so that we are able to distinguish between the monomers. To achieve that, scroll down to the last residue of the chain C that is glutamate 310 and in the fifth column of the control panel, click in the glutamate 310 row and drag the mouse upward till the first residue in chain A. This will display chain A and B and C as ribbons. Now scroll down to first residue of chain H that is glutamine 3. Click in the first column and drag the mouse down. It will display all the main chain atoms. Now again move to the first residue that is glutamine 3 in chain H. Click in the second column and drag the mouse down. This will display the side chains of the three HPR chains that is H, I and J chains. Therefore, now we have displayed the chain A, B, C as ribbons and chain H, I, J as atom. Now in the sixth column, go to the first residue of the chain H that is glutamine 3 and click in the box and scroll down till the last residue of chain J. This will immediately open a dialog box to choose a color from. So choose the cyan color from the dialog box and click OK. This will change the color of the three HPR chains to cyan. Thank you. The color of the boxes in the sixth column of the control panel changes to sign for these chains and this will change the color of three chain H, I, J to sign color. These three chains are HPR monomers made up of 88 amino acids each. With these action, three chains A, B, C of HPR, K, P will be colored as per preset ribbon colors and main chain and side chains residues of the three HPR chains. HIJ will be colored as sign color as in this slide. For superimposing ATP docked HPR with the HP bound HPR KP, we need only one chain of HPR KP with the corresponding bound chain of HPR. Therefore, extract HPR KP chain, one HPR KP chain and one HPR chain bound to the HPR KP chain uh, from the file 1KKL. To extract chain A and H, move to the last residues, last residue that is uh, glutamate 310 in chain A. Click on this label that is GLU310 and press the mouse button and drag it upwards. It will select the complete chain A. Now scroll down to the first residue in chain H that is glutamine 3, GLN3. Press control key and click on its label GLN3 and drag the mouse down till the last residue in the chain H which is glutamate 88. This will select the chain H also. Alternatively, in case you find difficulty with scrolling while the control key pressed and not stopping at glutamate 88, simply uh, first of all select none and then select first amino acid that is glutamine 3 in chain H. Scroll down to glutamate 88 of the chain H and press shift key and click glutamate 88. It will select from glutamine 3 to glutamate 88. Now scroll up. 
go to the last residue in chain A, glutamate 310. With the control key pressed here now, click on this glutamate 310 and drag the mouse upward. Tell glutamate 135 the first residue in chain A. Therefore, you can select these two chains very easily and then go for saving both the chains. The selection is successful as the color of the residue labels in the first column changes to red. Now save the selected residues using command selected residues of current layer of the save option in the file menu. Save the file with the file name 1kklmonomers.pdb. This will save hprkp chain A with bound hpr chain H. This structure will be used for superimposing ATP dot docked hprkp with this hpr bound hprkp. Close all layers. Now open the saved file 1kklmonomers.pdb containing hprkp chain A and hpr chain H monomers. From the select menu choose none command. Scroll down to serine 46 of hpr and display its main chain and side chain. Display it as sphere by marking in the fourth column. Color the residues as type from the color menu. This will change the serine to yellow sphere. Make visible the main chain and the side chain residues 155 to 162 of P loop of HPRKP. Make visible the labels of the residue 155 and 162. Display P loop residues of HPRKP as ribbons also. Display stereo vision and center the molecule. This reveals that serine 46 of HPR is placed very close to the ATP binding Vakre motif that is the P loop of HPR KP. To obtain 3D coordinates of ATP, visit PubCam and search for ATP. This will present a list of PubCam compounds containing keyword ATP. Click the first record for adenosine triphosphate to reach the ATP record. Scroll down to 3D conformer and download PubCam compound in STF format and save with the file name ATP.SDF. The docking tool that is the Swiss dock at Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics requires the ligand coordinates in MOL2 format. Therefore, to convert STF format that is saved ATP.STF to ATP.MOL2, visit WebQC molecular formats converted page. Open the ATP.STF file with notepad and accessory with Microsoft Windows operating system and copy all the contents onto clipboard and then paste in the next text box at the WebQC molecular formats converter page. Select input type format as SDF MDL mole format and output file type as mole 2 Sybil mole 2 format. Check add hydrogens checkbox and click convert button. This will present the coordinates in mole 2 format in a text box named molecule in output format. Click anywhere in the output format box and copy contents onto clipboard. Paste the contents in notepad and save with file name atp.mol2 and save as type all files chosen. Alternatively, for interconverting formats, Babel is another option available at the shown address in the slide. Computational protein ligand docking that is in silico protein ligand docking is undertaken to visualize the binding of the small molecule in the active site of a protein with non 3D structure. The protein taken may be an enzyme to understand the binding 
uh, of a substrate or a product or an inhibitor to its active site or it may be a protein receptor for understanding the binding of say a small molecule such as hormone for designing a lead compound to act as a drug will use this dock software uh, for protein ligand docking in this module. Visit Swiss talk and open tab submit talking. Upload saved file 1k7monomer.pdb as target and atp.mol2 as ligand. After successful setup, enter description details as shown or your own details. User can click on show extra parameters to set user defined docking parameters to be used but for now click start docking button. In the ensuing page click on here hyperlink to reach the results page. User can bookmark this results page for visiting later because the result page will appear within some time of few hours. Swiss doc will also send a results page link via email. After clicking link sent via email shows unknown job then remove an extra apostrophe appended at the end of the link address in the address bar which was appended inadvertently by Swiss doc and visit the link to view the results output. Download the predictions file and extract zipped file which contains clusters doc doc 4pdb file. In addition to Swiss talk, kindly visit comprehensive list of available docking portals which is kept up to date on the click to drug web portal. Open clusters doc 4pdb file with Swiss PDB viewer. Also open the PDB file 1k7 monomer, the file which was uploaded for docking. Display HPRKP monomer as ribbons with peel loop residues as spheres colored in cyan color. This display shows that ATP shown in gray color has several docked position to HPRKP. The dock positions also fall outside the P loop. Therefore, we need to analyze dockings for selection of the correct one. We know that ATP binds within the P loop. Therefore, dockings which are predicted outside the P loop are not the correct dockings. Consequently, we need to analyze the dockings manually to select the best docking which can be used for understanding the mechanism of the enzyme HPRKP. We will follow three step procedure. First, we'll, first of all we will select only those dockings which are present or binding only in the P loop that is ATP bound to the P loop because we know ATP binding occurs in the P loop. Then we will select those uh, dockings in which the phosphates of the ATP are overlapping with the phosphates which for which the structure was determined experimentally. So, if let us say this is phosphate 1, this is phosphate 2 for which the structure is available, we will use this ATP uh, to select only those dockings in which the phosphates of the ATP are overlapping with the phosphate bound in the P loop. If a adenine ring or ribose is overlapping with the P loop, then we will unselect all those uh, dockings. And finally, we will use once we find the correctly placed ATP with the overlapping phosphate, we will choose only those dockings in which the gamma phosphate of the ATP is close to the serine 46 because this phosphate is to be transferred to the serine 46 of the HPR. So, we will follow this three step criteria to finally arrive at the correct docking. Thank you make all dockings invisible by pressing shift and clicking in the first column and second column. Now in the stereo view display first docking that is LIG1 by marking V in the first column. 
This docking appears within P loop, therefore select it by clicking its name LIG1. Now make the next docking visible by marking V in the first column. If this next docking is not visible outside P loop, then make the previous docking invisible. If the currently displayed docking is within the P loop, then select it by pressing control key and clicking on its name that it LIG1 in the second row. Now make the next docking visible by marking V in the first column that is third row. If this next docking is not visible outside P loop, then follow the same procedure as for the previous docking. Continue with the next docking till a docking appears outside P loop. When the next docking is visible outside P loop, then do not select it and hide it. This leaves us with the first eight docking selected. Follow this procedure to select P loop docked ATP views. At the end, you will have only those docking selected which are having ATP docked within the P loop. Now make each of the selected docking visible by marking V mark in the first column for each of the selected docking. This will display only these dockings which are falling within the P loop. The ATP dockings in the P loop may be correct ones, but there may be some wrong placement of ATP in the P loop with the base or the sugar actually covering the P loop or occupying the P loop. Therefore, screening of correctly docked ATP in P loop is to be taken visually in the three dimension while appreciating the depth in stereo vision. Since an experimental structure of HPRKP bound to two phosphates in the P loop is available, therefore this structure can be used to find out which ATP docking is correct. The one will be correct in which the experimentally placed phosphates are overlapping with the docking or in silico or docking placed. Uh, phosphates in the ATP. Therefore, this structure can be used uh, for selecting those, uh, uh, those dockings in which the overlapping between the docked uh, phosphates and uh, the experimentally determined phosphates are overlapping. And we have already a file uh, which is uh, named as 1KO7 monomer with phosphates.pdb which we have already saved when we extracted the chain A with the two bound phosphates. So this can be used for uh, uh, selecting only those dockings in which the phosphates in ATP and phosphates in experimental structure are overlapping. So consequently hide the structure 1KO7 monomer and use this layer that is 1KO7 monomer with phosphates dot PDB. Thank you. Open the file 1K7 monomer with phosphates as ribbons. Display the last two residues that is phosphates D316 and PO4317 in sphere form with CPK color and P loop residues that is residues 151 to residues 158 as spheres in cyan color. Loop residues in cyan color can be distinguished from the phosphates in the CPK color shown as spheres. In the control panel, switch to clusters dot dot four layer. Now hide all ligands by pressing shift key and clicking anywhere in the first column of the control panel. Display first ligand by marking V in the first column. Now rotate, move and zoom molecule to display gray colored ATP docked in cyan colored P loop with CPK colored phosphates visible clearly in the front side as shown in this slide in the stereo view. In this view, it is clear that alpha and beta phosphates of the ATP are overlapping with the two phosphates which are docked or docked phosphate in the experimental structure. Therefore, leave the ligand 
one in the first row selected in the control panel and hide it. Now display the next ligand. If the phosphates in the ATP are overlapping with the two phosphates in the experimental structure, then select this docking. Otherwise, deselect it. And at the same time, hide this ligand. Continue this process. I mean, select the next ligand again. If this ligand is overlapping with the phosphates, that is, the two phosphates in the experimental structure have overlapping phosphates of the ATP, then only this is selected. Otherwise, not selected and hidden. So, continue this procedure till we select all those all those uh, dockings, ATP dockings in this group having overlapping phosphates with the experimental phosphates. Thank you. This leaves us with all the eight docked ATPs selected. Now display all the eight docked ATPs by marking V in the first column of control panel against each. This display reveals that each of the docked ATP is overlapping with others. Continue with next selected dockings to keep only those dockings which have overlapping phosphates. In the next group, we will find that all 13 docked ATPs are docked correctly. The third group with 8 dockings shown here is also docked correctly. In the next group, Adenine ring of ATP is sitting in the P loop. Therefore, each of the docked ATP in this group is also unselected. In the last group, phosphates are not overlapping. Therefore, each of the docked ATP is unselected. Consequently, we have first three groups, each with 8, 13, and 8 residues selected till now. Open KKL monomer structure containing HPR bound to HPR-KP. Superimpose this structure onto HPR-KP in 1KO7 monomer. Hide 1KO7 monomer with phosphates. Center view. Display P-loop residues 155 to 162 in cyan color as spheres. Hide backbone of chain H that is HPR substrate and display it as ribbons. Display serine 46 of HPR as sphere and select color from the color menu as type that is yellow spheres will appear. Rotate, move and zoom to display two substrates that is serine 46 in HPR and ATP docked in P loop we find that only third group with eight dockings is fitting gamma phosphate of ATP next to serine 46 of HPR and that too without making any clashes with any other residue in HPR KP or HPR. Therefore, this docking is correctly positioned to transfer gamma phosphate of ATP to serine 46 of HPR in the kinase reaction. Consequently, we are ready to use this docked ATP and bound HPR to HPR kinase phosphorylase to select or choose those residues which are present nearby to these two substrates and therefore might be involved in uh, the functioning or the biochemical action. And consequently, we can formulate some hypothesis so that these hypotheses can be tested experimentally. Dear students, at this stage we know now that, that the proteins uh, are involved in various biochemical processes in which they interact or bind to their ligands. If the three-dimensional structure of the bound ligand and the protein is available, then it helps us in understanding the way, the mechanism in which it might be functioning. However, if the three-dimensional structure of the bound ligand and protein is not available, then we can obtain the complex structure that is the ligand bound to its protein part using in silico docking. Therefore, 
what we need at this stage is that we must have the three dimensional structure of the protein and the three dimensional coordinates of the ligand. If the three dimensional experimental structure of the protein is not available, one can opt for homology modeling and obtain an adequate model and then download that ligand structure 3D coordinates and use in the docking. After docking, analyze the docking results to select the correct ones. In the present module, we have followed a three step criteria in which we first selected only those correctly uh, docked ATP molecules which are docking in the P loop. Then we selected only those within the P loop having overlapping phosphates with the experimentally determined structures of the phosphates. And finally, we place the gamma phosphate which is to be transferred that is gamma phosphate of the ATP which is to be transferred to the serine 46 of the second substrate that is HPR. So, in this way we were able to select the correct placement or the docking of the ATP which was in close contact to the serine. So, this established the correctness of the selected docking. Continue, uh, consequently, this docked ATP with the bound HPR within the active site of the enzyme can be used uh, to look at those residues which are present within say 5 angstroms of these two structures and are involved in the transfer of the gamma phosphate from the ATP to the serine 46. This will help in selecting or identifying those residues which might be involved in the functioning or the mechanism for the catalysis. And then subsequently one can hypothesize that in case a site directed mutagenesis experiment is undertaken and after site directed mutagenesis a recombinant or mutated enzyme is expressed and if it goes or gives the experimental data in our expectation then the mechanism which we hypothesized was the correct one. So, therefore, this docking or the availability of the docked ligand with its protein counterpart helps in understanding the mechanism in which the biochemical function or the activity or the catalysis or the binding is being performed by the enzyme or the protein itself. I thank you all for visiting EPG Patshala.